a little more than a week in. Uh, yeah. what, what have you seen so far from your unit? What do you like? You know what? An increase in physicality, an increase in the mentality that's necessary to uh, to deal with the challenges of, of playing football, playing up front in the trenches. So we got to just continue to see that growth and, and on a consistent basis. You know, there can't be uh, ups and downs. We just want to be steady. So uh, just got to keep working on that. You know, we keep working on that. We'll continue to grow as a, as a unit up front. I always hear you talk about five bodies, one mind. Yeah. You feel like you're getting there with a lot of guys right now? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's five men, one mind. Is, it's kind of the, the mantra because those guys have to be on the same page, you know. And we do, we are shuffling in a lot of guys right now, you know, obviously trying to – you got to try to um, – create the depth, you know, create the, the flexibility and the versatility in case somebody goes down, you know. So uh, right now it's not like, hey, you five guys are going to ride. And so sometimes that communication, obviously, uh, when you shuffle guys in and out, there's you no, know, but they got to get used to it, you know, because you might have to do that uh, during the course of a game. And and if you really truly preach competition, then you got to give, you know, those guys the opportunity to uh, to show themselves, right? So uh, once you show, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm doing it at a high level with the, with the threes, you kind of, okay, let's see if he can go with the twos. You put them with the twos, okay, show they could do with the twos, okay, let's throw them in with the ones. And then you're like, okay, you know, if, they can, if he can hang with the ones at our place, then okay, maybe he can hang with the ones that the other opponents were going to face. So uh, that's kind of how you do it, you know, so there's a lot of shuffling around right now. So it's not like, um, are, are we developing that, that cohesiveness, that, that communication? Yeah, we work on it in a, on a daily basis, but we're not just riding with five guys. You know, we're, we've got to be able to create that depth. We've got to be able to create, okay, if, if, um, if the starting right guard goes down, who are we going to slide over? You know, is it, the, is it the backup right guard, or do you slide the right tackle there? And so that's what training camp is for. You know, training camp is for that. You know, right now we've got a lot of guys that are playing in a right-handed stance and in a left-handed stance. It's something that we do in the winter, that we do in the summer. We kind of carry into fall camp, and then once we start getting – about 10, 10 days out from the game, then you start, then from, from game one against Fresno State, then you start to say, okay, listen, you're going to take all your reps on the left side or right side. So that's still a little bit of ways. Last year, you guys were the youngest offensive line in the country. Yeah. I mean, just how different is it this year compared to last year, having some of the experience in your room? Well, it's, it's good, you know, that, uh, you know, obviously their, their eyes are a year older. You know, their understanding of what we're doing and how we do it, you know, is, is a year older. You know, we talk about in our room that in order – uh, a lot of guys say, hey, you know what, I want to come in, and, come in and compete. And we say, no, no, that's the second step. The first step is knowing what to do, why to do it, and how to do it. And then knowing what to do, why to do it, how to do it at a real, 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 real fast pace. Once you do that, then you can go compete. But as long as you're still slowly processing, hey, what do I have to do? Why do I have to do it? And how do I have to do it? You can't really just go let go and, and go compete, right? So that's what we try to tell them. We try to tell them, hey, when you know what to do, why to do, how to do it, and do it fast, now you'll be able to play fast. You'll be able to play fast. Now you can really go legitimately compete, you know? So because those guys have that one year, that group has that one year under their belt now, right? They're, they're processing things a lot faster. They process the things a lot faster. You can play a lot faster on the field. You can play a lot more physical. You can play a lot more, with a lot more uh, being sure of what you're doing, you know? So that's kind of where I see a lot of that growth happening. Talking about the, the coaching dynamic between you and Coach Cristobal, I think in the spring he said something along the lines of, you know, he's your graduate assistant. You know, you're running the show as far as the offensive line goes. You know, being there at practice and seeing what it's like with you guys, I feel like it's a pretty seamless transition. What, what's that dynamic like, the coaching dynamic like with you guys? Well, first of all, it's, you know, Coach Cristobal, Coach Barron, you know, Coach Woodle's involved off the field, but he's involved in it. You know, and myself is there's no ego. You know, there's no, I'm old enough now, right? I'm 51, you know, coach, I'm not going to say his age, but we're about the same age, you know, where we're, we're beyond that, you know, we're beyond this being an ego deal, you know, about, Hey, look at me. I'm the coach. I don't care. As long as we're getting our guys better, that's all that matters. And what it does, it benefits us. You know, when we, when we do an individual drove, you guys go out to practice, you know, coach will take a group. I'll take a group. Coach Barron will take a group. You know, coach Bobby Williams will take another group. And now those guys are getting a bunch of reps and they're getting better. You know, and we're all on the same page. We all speak the same language. Obviously, it starts with coach, right? He's the head football coach. Uh, I'm the offensive line coach. You know, and if, if I, he and I will go talk behind closed doors, hey, coach, you know, I think we should do this. He says, hey, we should do that. We come to an understanding and whatever, that, that's what happens. You know, and if there's ever a debate, he's the head football coach. We're going we're gonna to do what, what he feels most comfortable because at the end of the day, this program, this offense, this offensive line unit is a reflection of him, you know, and it should be, and it should be. So, I mean, we, we, We've known each other 37 years, okay? So we've known each other 37 years. So he and I are, are if we weren't of, the, of, of like mind, of like DNA, of like beliefs and values, all right, we wouldn't be with each other. You know, that's just the way it is. We wouldn't be working with each other. So it's, it's really, it's never an issue. There's not, hey, 
I'm going to step on his toes. No, we're, so, uh, most of the time during practice, we don't even say a word to each other just because, you know, I'll be watching the left side of the line. He'll watch the right or he's got to watch the defense, you know, so there's, it, it's, it's awesome. It's easy to work for him. I know some guys say, hey, is it hard to work for a uh, head coach who's also an offensive line guy? Not if he's got coach's personality and coach's values and, you know, we're, we're very like-minded. You know, I, I believe he believes in power, physical football. Well, so do I. I mean, you know, so it, it's not like I believe in finesse and we should run this or run that. You know, I believe in what he believes we need to run. So it's, it's pretty easy. And then a lot of people uh, I've talked to you say it's just a crazy experience getting to break down film with you. What, what do you like about watching film? You know, are you, you kind of just love diving into that. What's that like yeah, for you? I, I love I love the technique, the fundamentals of of playing the, 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 the position of offensive line, you know, because I think that's how the kids get better. You know, I, I don't. There's certain things that I love from an offensive scheme standpoint, but I'm not the offensive coordinator. So wherever I've ever been, if the offensive coordinator wants to do this, my job is to get it done, is to get it done. Now, the offensive coordinators I've been with, including Coach Moorhead, they'll let me get it done however I, I think and Coach thinks we need to get it done. But So I don't lose in that. You know, hey, you're going to run power? I don't. We're going to run veer. I don't, that's, that's not my job. I'm not the offensive coordinator. I'll have suggestions, sure. But at the end of the day, your job as an assistant is to carry out the, the scheme beliefs of the head football coach and the offensive coordinator. So, uh, but I love watching film. I love the, the, the individual, the fundamentals. We'll watch as much of our practice scheme as we will of our individual drills. You know? And then what I do is I'll take the individual drills. I say, there it is. There's the individual drill in action in, in a team setting. Because you know, it does you no good to drill stuff individual. And then when you go to combo, combo drills or you go to drills against the defense and then you go to team and you're not doing it, right? So what I try to do is I try to, you, you link them, hey, these are the drills we're doing, there's that drill in action, you know? So that's what I love doing to, to get those guys better. I don't, when, on game day, on September 4th, I do not worry about the scoreboard. It's not my job. It's not my, my job to manage the scoreboard. It's not my job to manage the clock. It's my job to help our guys get better, you know? So I'm like, when the right tackle comes out, hey, listen, on, 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 on that inside zone play, you took the improper footwork. Your hands weren't where they're supposed to get the hands underneath. Because to me, that's how they, you, get, you get them better, you know? So uh, that's what I love doing. Sorry, I'm sorry you, Pete, Alex, but yeah. in terms of the twos, who are you looking at across the board? Is it Kings, Harp? Well, we're, we're, we were just talking about it, and right now we're rotating 12, 13 guys through, right? And because our job during training camp is to develop the depth that will allow us, if there are injuries, Right? If there are injuries, how do we shuffle guys around? If guys aren't producing, how do we shuffle guys around? So right now, to me, it's, it's like Coach Cristobal says, it's an organizational chart, right? Well, you gotta, you gotta make it real. So when you got, if, if you come out and watch our, our team periods and stuff like that, I mean, there'll be Steven Jones today played right tackle, left tackle, and inside at, at guard, right? Because, you know, why? Because of the fact that if somebody gets hurt, okay, what, what piece do you shuffle around? Moore was at tackle, was at guard. Uh, Dennis was the same way, you know? So it provides us with that versatility. Uh, and then at the end of the day, you know, we have a scrimmage tomorrow. We have uh, another one a little bit down, right? And that's the closest thing to a game-like thing. How do, you, how do you produce there? And then that's where you start developing that organizational chart, starts to become a depth chart as the games approach. What is it like having just solid back after? It's awesome. Benjamin? It's awesome. He's a heck of a football player, uh, has, has played a lot of football, you know, played at Navarro Junior College, has played here for us. So you're talking about a, a guy who was a veteran who was not around in the spring. You know, he had to go home, take care of some stuff down in Hilo. Uh, he's back and he looks great. You know, he's at 320 pounds. He's athletic. He's long, you know, and uh, so it's awesome to have him back. It's awesome to have him back and he's part of the whole competition. You know, like we told, Coach Cristobal told, told the players, you know, competition everybody's always fired up for competition every player is always fired up for competition until it doesn't go your way until it doesn't go your way right and that's that's going to be the real deal right there's we have 20 oh, offensive linemen in our room and we play against fresno state there's only you can, i can't try it out 20 now you try it out five you try it out five so that's something that you know we and, and we're very open and and blunt about it with our guys you know there is going to be competition at the end of the day the best five guys are going to play you know and if we if 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 we have a sixth, a seventh, and an eighth guy to play, right? If we talk, if we pull the start out, and we put you in. Is there a, a significant drop off? If there is, then you don't do that, right? But if there's not, in our mind, then we'll do that. You know you're losing George after the year, but when Alex is able to tell you so far in advance that he intends to return, yeah. And based off the Senior Bowl watch list right. for whatever they're worth, yeah. you have a couple guys there. But does sure. that mean that a Jones or a Bass are indicating to you that they're at least considering? I, I'm worried. I 
I'm, I'm hoping I wake up tomorrow morning. You know, George's been here like eight years, right? So it's about time for George to go. But uh, no, George, George, uh, obviously he's, he's, uh, he, he'll be finished after this year. And I think, I, I think that's just Alex Forsyth, right? I think Alex Forsyth is a guy that, that he's going to take, he's going to get the most out of the University of Oregon, academically and athletically. And, and he should. And he should. That's what I think, in my opinion, that's what student athletes should do. And, and that's what he's going to do. And it's, it's awesome to have him because I think he just loves being around. He loves leading, you know. Um, so that's awesome. I have not, James, I'm not, no BS. I have not talked about it with Walk. I have not talked about it with Bass. I, ne- I didn't talk about it with Forsyth. I find out about Forsyth from, from you guys, from the media. That's how I find out. He said he Al, told you, though. Al never told me. He told me. He told, he told uh, <laughs> Coach after the fact. You know, he never told me, and it's great. I mean, love it. Love to have all those guys back. Love to have Bass back, Walk back. Love to have George get another waiver for another year. You know, <laughs> so selfishly, but it's not, it's not the NFL. But so it, it's been, it, it's awesome, but it doesn't change. It doesn't change the decisions we make now. You know, and they know that, and they know that, and they welcome that because they, they want to win. You know, they want to win. Positional versatility perspective, how many are you confident could play all five? Well, all five, well, not a lot of them can play. It is because of the center spot. The center spot is different. The center spot is different. So we've got, uh, let's see, we have Forsyth can play, play center, uh, Walk play center, Dennis play center, Harper's playing center, um, Rossi's playing center. So those guys, those guys, and Dawson Haramillo. So we got six guys right now that can play center, Jackson. which is a lot. And, and Jackson. Forgot about Jackson. So seven. We got seven guys, you know, because we kind of just now are transitioning Harper there. So we got seven guys. That's a lot. That's a lot. I remember my first year here, we had two, right? We had we had Hanson and, and Throck, and they were both starting at the same time. So we have seven, so that's awesome. There's other guys that, that are just not centers, you know? Right. Uh, there's I would never think about putting George there. I would never think about it, just because it's not natural to him, you know? But as far as the other thing, you know, now, the one thing that all 20 of them can do is all 20 of them can play on the left side, they can play on the right side. You know, and I've said this at, since we got here, right, um, from January through camp, we do all our drills left-handed, we do all our drills right-handed. Every one of them. Every one of them. Now, when we get about 10 days out from the game, then we'll start, you know, the guys that are the starters, then you'll start focusing on that stance. The guys that are the backups, you don't have that luxury. The guys that are the backups, you've got to be able to go right-handed, left-handed, you know. So a kid like a Jonathan Dennis, he could play center for us, but he plays left guard for us. He also plays, can play right guard for us, you know. And sometimes we actually throw him out of tackle. You know, the, 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 the hardest part of my day, the longest part of my day, the thing I, that consumes my time the most is every day when I get the practice schedule, right, we'll have four team periods. Four, and the four team periods, I write down well, who's going to be with the ones, who's going to be with the twos, and, and I, so that I make sure, right, that I, okay, I need this guy to be with, with the starting group just in case something happens, you know? I need Logan Sagapulo yesterday. We, he, we, we put him with the ones for a little bit, right? He hadn't been there, so we put him there. And it, it's a jigsaw puzzle, right? It's a jigsaw puzzle. So I, I'll write it down on a board, and then I'll type it into, the, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I spend the most amount of time hmm. with at that, at, uh, during the course of a day. Uh, at, that consumes the most amount of my time. So I, I'm, I'm sure that when, if they have to be thrown in the game, that they've taken reps there. Last question. As an O-line coach, yep. when the Oklahoma Trill dies? You know what? I, I think a lot of the changes that NCAA has done have been positive. I think that that's a really, really positive drill. I think the Oklahoma drill, it, it, I don't need Alex Forsyth to show me that he's tough. I don't need T.J. Bass to show me that he's tough. I know that already. So, to me, that's a drill that with a bull in the ring, the Oklahoma drill, uh, I, I think those are things that are that are dinosaurs that were that became extinct and and in a good way, in a good way. Um, I, I don't think we need it. I think there's things that we do in our individual drills. There's things that we do against a defense that uh, in a in a in a in a in a blocking block recognition drill that, that we do every day, every day. That's a lot more productive, a lot more effective than that. You know, you'll watch us in our practice. Our old linemen never jump over agility bags because you never jump over agility bags in in um, in the game, you know, I'm not a I'm not a big fan, and thank God, you know, I'd rather run team pass than one-on-one pass rush, because one-on-one pass rush is not real, because that defensive end that that thinks he's got a two-way going come inside in a team setting, that guard's gonna be there to pick him off, you know. So I, I'm not I'm good, I'm good with it, I'm awesome with it, I'm glad they did away with it, and you know we're good. It's not gonna change us at all.